Hello YouTube pilot friends and welcome to this presentation short video on drift correction and the drift line. So in our previous flight planning video we drew 10 degree drift lines on our chart and we also calculated an appropriate drift angle for the flight. Now in an ideal world the meteorological forecast would give us a perfectly accurate wind and if we followed our calculated heading we would end up on time and on track overhead our given destination. Unfortunately the world is rarely an ideal place and so sometimes forecast winds are maybe stronger or weaker or from a different direction to that which we hoped. And the purpose of this video is to look at how we deal with that. Many of you may be familiar with the 1 in 60 rule from perhaps PPL training or maybe even ATPL ground exams and it's a, a very good technique which works well but it's not the one we're going to investigate today. This is a more commercial technique and it's called double drift and it uses the drift lines. Looking then at our flight, we've arrived at Melton Mowbray and we can see immediately that our position lies directly between our intended track and our drift line. And we can make a quick approximation that we are five degrees off of track. If we continued on that heading then, we would just continually diverge from track by five degrees and end up several miles away from our intended location. But we now know that we have a problem, so we can do something about it. Now the first thing is that we need to get rid of that five degree problem. We need to turn to the left by a further five degrees, and that will stop the problem. However, if we do that, all we'll do is parallel the track with an offset of whatever the error is when we detect it, and we still don't end up where we want to go. So the next thing is we double the drift. So instead of five degrees left, we actually apply 10 degrees left and we fly using that amended heading. That will bring us back onto track. The trick here is that we make a note of the time when we're overhead Melton Mowbray. And for argument's sake, we'll call that 10 minutes. We now fly our double drift heading, that's 10 degrees extra to the left, for another 10 minutes. And after that time period, we should be back on track. Once we're back on track, we simply apply only the single drift correction. That's the extra five degrees to the left. So we take five degrees off, turn to the right by five degrees and continue. And that corrects the problem. It gets us back on track quickly. So that's a double drift technique. You get to a known point, look at the time, and for the same amount of time, put double the error on and fly for that amount of time. Now the advantages of doing this as opposed to perhaps a one in 60 rule is that we don't need to have our head in the cockpit looking at the map all the time. We pick checkpoints at the pre-flight planning stage and we know in the case of our plan that we were going to take approximately nine minutes to get to our checkpoint. So let's say it's seven minutes we might get the chart out in the cockpit and have a look out of the window as we are doing anyway and relate our position on the chart and our position on the ground and get ready to make that correction if anything's coming up. The other advantage of this technique is it gets us back on track quickly. And that can be an issue with controlled airspace. The airspace at Cottesmore is non-existent now. However, wittering still exists. And you can see that we really want to get away from that wittering airspace as quickly as possible. If we were to just correct using 1 in 60 and end up on a drift corrected heading flying directly to Fenland, there's a likelihood we could have a problem getting close to the controlled military airspace, something we'd probably want to avoid. So double drift gets us back on track quickly. Now what do you say if there isn't a suitable checkpoint until after, I don't know, halfway along the track? Well, that would be a problem, I suppose, because if you put on double drift after the halfway point, you won't get back on track before you get to your intended destination. However, there is a simple solution to this, and that is triple drift. So if your checkpoint is after the halfway point, apply triple drift, and then fly that for the suitable amount of time. So you fly triple drift for half the period that you've flown for. In this case, if after 10 minutes, the error is five degrees, you fly 15 degrees correction for five minutes, and then revert to the single drift correction of five degrees. Well, I hope that's been helpful and makes some sense. And I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for listening.